Nikola Tesla is one of the greatest scientific minds of all time. Even more than the 20th century, he's responsible for the 21st century. Pioneer of alternating current, remote control, and wireless power. He wanted to distribute electrical power to all parts of the Earth. But the circumstances of his death are highly suspicious. Tesla might have been killed over his invention of the particle weapon. Was Nikola Tesla murdered in a conspiracy to steal his death ray plans? They picked the lock, opened the safe. Or could he have been assassinated to stop enemy powers obtaining his devastating weapon? Kill people, bring down machinery, bring down airplanes. In the early 1930s, Adolf Hitler storms into power. His Nazi rhetoric appears certain to trigger a Second World War. We had a rogue regime in Germany that was hell-bent on taking over the world. It was pretty clear that war was on the horizon, and governments were interested in anything that could give them an edge in that war. In New York City, one man thinks he has that edge the key to the most devastating weapon ever devised. His name, Nikola Tesla. He was a seer, a visionary, the inventor of remote control, the motors that we use today. It's the wireless transmission of radio signals. Electricity available 24-7 anywhere you live on the Earth. Even more than the 20th century, he's responsible for the 21st century. In 1934, after a lifetime of scientific discovery, Serbian-American Nikola Tesla announces his invention of a revolutionary particle beam weapon, the death ray. Tesla was making very substantial claims about so-called teleforce rays that could bring down airplanes from thousands of miles away. So powerful is the death ray, it could create an impenetrable shield around any nation possessing it, making war obsolete. His announcement raises headlines around the world. And in 1935, the concept secures a ready buyer, not in his adopted home America, but in its emerging rival, the Soviet Union. The Soviets gave him $25,000 for some preliminary details regarding the particle beam weapon. The deal for the death ray concept is done in secret, but Tesla suspects he's being spied upon, and soon after, He's involved in a suspicious accident. He was hit by taxi, and uh, was it coincidence or not? It is possible that someone tried to, to assassinate, you know. He was followed at that time by the FBI, and he gave his project to the Soviet Union. So maybe for some people, it seems uh, very dangerous what he, is, he was doing. And he, he maybe someone wanted to eliminate him. Yeah, it's it's uh, possible. But Nikola Tesla survives. And in 1939, predictions of another war come true as Nazi Germany invades Poland. With World War II raging in 1943, from his home in a New York hotel, Tesla contacts a U.S. military general to ask for a meeting. He wants to share the secret of his death ray to help end the war. Tesla was trying to involve the United States government and then any other government who would listen to him. But the inventor never makes it to that meeting. Within days, on January 8, 1943, Nikola Tesla's found dead in his Manhattan hotel room. He was a recluse living alone in two rooms of the Hotel New Yorker. The timing of his death is suspicious. And so is the fact that his hotel safe is ransacked and personal papers taken. Has iconic genius Nikola Tesla been killed to gain access to the deadly secret of his death ray? For decades, Rumors and conspiracy theories swirl. There are some theories that suggest that Tesla might have been killed over his invention of the particle weapon. And certainly there are a lot of people who suggest that Tesla's papers and notes 
for a particle beam weapon were stolen so that nefarious governments could work on them. Now, recently released FBI files have revealed the identities of the men who raided the safe in the hours after Tesla's death. The mysterious group was led by Tesla's own nephew, Sava Kasanovich, who was a Yugoslav diplomat and not well liked by his uncle. Kasanovich brings a group of people with him, as well as a locksmith. They pick the lock, open the safe. Kasanovich is named in the FBI files as a possible communist. Knowing the Soviet Union already had the death ray plans, did Tesla's nephew and the group with him steal the plans to the death ray to keep them out of American hands? Sanovich is not an individual that the FBI and the US government trusts. They don't know who he's gonna side with at the end of the war. There are also other powers who are desperate to obtain the death ray and might have a motive to kill Nikola Tesla for it. Top of the list, Nazi Germany. The German government took death rays very seriously. The Nazis probably would have been interested in the particle beam weapon as one of several devices that they could use to terrorize another population. Another possible culprit, Tesla's home country, America. Could Tesla have been assassinated to prevent him selling the plans to U.S. enemies? The U.S. was engaged in fighting Hitler and the Nazis and trying to take over the world. So a weapon such as a death ray being developed by Tesla, falling into the wrong hands, could have been devastating. One day after Sava Kasanovich and his cohorts leave Tesla's room, the FBI and Office of Alien Property seize Tesla's remaining documents. Could they have stolen the plans so America could secretly develop their own death ray? Something very fishy went on. He kept a small black book in which he recorded some of his more out there types of uh, ideas about weapon systems to end all war. That went missing, as well as a lot of the other papers concerning the death ray. During the Second World War, I'm sure that uh, governments on both sides would have loved to have gotten their hands on um, Tesla's death ray, or at least the plans for one. It's not just governments desperate to steal his death ray that may have a motive to harm Nikola Tesla. In his life as a visionary and eccentric inventor, he made and lost massive fortunes associated with arms dealers and spies and had bitter rivalries with some of the biggest names in American history. The mere facts of Tesla's life and his death lends itself to all sorts of wild speculation. In the midst of World War II, acclaimed inventor Nikola Tesla is found dead. His hotel safe is raided. Some believe he might have been killed, and his blueprint for a deadly weapon stolen. The mere facts of Tesla's death lends itself very easily to all sorts of speculation. Is Tesla's death linked to his lifelong obsession to create an electric superweapon called the Death Ray? Tesla claimed that his uh, death beam would be able to destroy an attacking enemy air fleet. He said that this would also be able to stop an enemy army uh, up to a million men. Born during a lightning storm in 1856 in modern-day Croatia, Nikola Tesla's entire life would be shaped by electricity. As a student in his homeland, he dreams of using it to provide free energy to the world. But he realizes that can't happen using direct current, or DC, the method favored by American electricity pioneer Thomas Edison, who is currently lighting up New York. Direct current is a type of current where the polarity never changes, so the, the current only flows in one direction. That's what you get out of a battery. But because increasing its voltage was difficult, DC power couldn't be transmitted over large distances. So Tesla invents a motor that will use alternating current, or AC, and in 1884, travels from Europe to show it to his hero, 
Thomas Edison. An alternating current allows us to change a voltage from one value to a much higher value. So we can use thin wires, which makes it economical to transmit power over very, very large distances. But Edison is committed to his own DC system and dismisses Tesla's proposal. With this rejection, a lifelong rivalry begins. Tesla seeks out a different benefactor and finds Edison's competitor, George Westinghouse. With his backing in 1888, Tesla unveils his induction AC motor, further fueling the bitter conflict between Edison and Tesla, which became known as the War of the Currents. Edison begins a dramatic smear campaign to paint AC power as a dangerous option. Things like do demos where they would use alternating current to electrocute animals. Uh, they made sure that when New York State built the first electric chair, that it was with a Westinghouse electric motor. And look how dangerous this is. For five years, America's electrical giants are locked in battle. The War of the Currents reaches its climax in 1893, when Tesla successfully uses his AC system to light up the World's Fair in Chicago. It was something fantastic. People couldn't understand where this current is coming, how it's happened. It was magical. Tesla and Westinghouse are hailed as heroes, while Edison is humbled. Next, they win an enormous contract to build the world's first large-scale hydroelectric power plant in Niagara Falls. Here was a technology that was going to revolutionize people's daily lives. The project cements AC as America's chosen power system. The main reason why alternating current beat out direct current is simply that it was more efficient and much more economical. Tesla's AC current has finally won the War of the Currents, leaving the great Thomas Edison embittered and possibly set on revenge. Today, if you were to look at one of those satellite images that shows you how the world is lit up at night, 95% of the electricity that you see in that picture, all of those lights, is distributed by alternating current. Without Tesla's invention of alternating current technology, it would be a much darker and quieter world. With his success comes fame, making Tesla the toast of the New York social scene. In the press, He's depicted as a wizard with almost magical powers, an archetypal mad scientist, an image enhanced by his eccentric habits. Tesla himself was a very strange individual. Among his unusual traits, Tesla was celibate his entire life. He only slept three hours a night, believed in alien life, and had an unexplained aversion to pearls. But his most remarkable feature was his unstoppable brain which over his lifetime would produce over 300 patents. Tesla would describe the process of invention as basically he would build a model in his mind and then run simulations, um, almost the way engineers do with computers today. But Tesla's weakness is business acumen. Although the Westinghouse AC motors sell millions, when Westinghouse runs into money trouble, Tesla relinquishes the royalties for his AC motor patent, a decision that would deny him of an estimated $300 million. But it's scientific discovery, not money, that drives Tesla. And as a new century dawns, he sets his mind to solving another of electricity's biggest challenges. Tesla was obsessed. He wanted to distribute electrical power to all parts of the Earth. It's an obsession that will take him one step closer to the superweapon that could be his deadly downfall. Near the end of the 19th century, the idea of a devastating superweapon, a device powerful enough to make war obsolete, first takes root in Nikola Tesla's brain. But before it can become reality, he must push his visionary mind past a new technological frontier. After his winning of the War of the Currents, he was obsessed with getting rid of the wires used to distribute power. It's an idea that Tesla brings to his New York workshop. 
and in 1891 takes form in his most spectacular invention, the Tesla coil. Using what's known as resonance, the coil amplifies low voltages into massive voltages. It's like having a tuning fork on steroids, except voltage-wise. So you can get very, very big vibrations at very, very high frequencies. By emitting high-frequency alternating current waves, the Tesla coil lights up bulbs without any wire connection. For Tesla, it's a literal light bulb moment. Could wireless power be sent this way around the globe? He was obsessed. He wanted to distribute electrical power to all parts of the Earth. And he thinks the perfect conductor could be found in nature. What does nature give me that could possibly pass for a wire? And he had the air above his head. So he's going to use the atmosphere as a free conductor. To keep his new project away from the prying eyes of his rival, Thomas Edison, Tesla leaves New York. In 1899, he builds a new lab in the prairie near Colorado Springs. For his dream of wireless power transmission to work, he needs to find a way to electrify the atmosphere. What he was thinking was he could mount these Tesla coils on the top of high buildings and transmit energy by using these discharges, which are similar to lightning strikes, and therefore he could create a distribution system for electricity that didn't require poles and wires. The Colorado locals watch in awe as Tesla summons his own lightning storms and rolling thunder. He was a terrific showman, and so that brought this aura of being a wizard about him. The larger the coil, the more energy Tesla is able to make. Just one major challenge remains. So far, he hasn't been able to produce sufficient power to travel more than 100 feet. The difficulty with transmitting things wirelessly is most of it leaks away, and you, you get a very small amount of power at the receiver. Tesla turns his idea on its head and wonders if the solution might be lying right beneath his feet. He believed that you'd be able to pump electrical energy into the Earth at the resonant frequency of the Earth, set up standing waves, and that that energy would be transmitted or distributed across the surface of the Earth. They would then travel through the Earth's crust to locations where people would basically put a wire or drive a pipe into the ground, and you would get your electricity or your messages um, from, that, from that pipe or that wire. But before he can turn this vision into reality, Tesla's eclectic brain is distracted by a new challenge in the newly discovered field of radio waves. He realized that radio could be used for communicating human to machine. Three decades before the death ray, he comes up with a concept that will later change the face of warfare. A model boat controlled remotely. How Tesla's system worked for remote control of the boat was imagine two radio receivers, one tuned to channel A and one tuned to channel B. A signal appears in channel A, says, rudder, you do this, and signal on channel B says, rudder, you do that other thing. So you could see how you could extend this to control lots and lots of bits and pieces necessary to control a boat's motion. Tesla's idea for a remote controlled boat came from his interest in automatons and his interest in building what we now call robots, but he built that remote control uh, boat two decades before the word robot was even coined. The remote controlled boat is Tesla's first step into the deadly field of military tech. And it won't be his last. He was working on radio controlled torpedoes, robot ships, all sorts of things. He dreams up weapons, vehicles, even robotic soldiers that can be controlled from a distance. But his vision is too far ahead of its time to gain traction. The U.S. Navy was not interested. Uh, the demonstrations were not convincing to them. People are always kind of hesitant about new technologies. Tesla's concept of remote control weapons only becomes military reality many decades after his death. Conceptually, 
the idea of a boat or remote control device that could be used in a defensive way without putting soldiers in harm's way comes from Tesla. That, of course, is the grandfather of today's drone technology. Ironically, Tesla's drive to create horrifying superweapons is his pacifism. An early supporter of the deterrent theory, he wants to create weapons so destructive that war becomes pointless. The idea was so-called teleforce rays that could bring down airplanes from thousands of miles away. He said that it would make war impossible. Tesla's plan is to build something so powerful it can bring about peace through mutually assured destruction. He wants to create the death ray to save lives. As the 20th century dawns, in his Colorado Springs lab, Nikola Tesla is testing dangerous theories. He believes he can transmit wireless power around the world through the earth beneath his feet. He thought that the earth itself was like a giant condenser, that the earth contained a great deal of natural energy. Tesla was convinced that if he could tap the resonance energy of the earth, that he would be able to create waves that would, in theory, never dissipate. Using an ultra-sensitive electrical receiver, he makes a stunning discovery. While Tesla was in Colorado Springs, he had basically hooked up a receiver to see what kind of currents were passing through the Earth. And one night, he realized that he was not only getting currents through the Earth, but he was also getting a consistent signal, first one beep, then two beeps, and three beeps as he listened on a telephone receiver. Surprisingly, Tesla claims the source must be extraterrestrial, possibly coming from Mars. The public was fascinated by this account because it made the headlines in major newspapers around the world that somehow Tesla was in communication with outer space. The public loved it. Scientists attacked it roundly because they didn't believe such a thing was possible. Actually, the scientists were incorrect, but no one knew that at the time. Again, Tesla is simply light years ahead of his time. A century later, his belief is partially vindicated. Scientists 100 years later figured out that what Tesla was actually listening to was not necessarily a message from Mars, but indeed a radio signal that was coming from one of the moons of Jupiter. So there was a real astronomical phenomenon that Tesla was the first to measure. Yet, Tesla believes his greatest achievements are still to come. He wanted to prove that it would be possible to transmit power and messages all over the world using his ideas about oscillating currents that could be pumped into the Earth. To make the dream happen, he'll need a much bigger testing facility. And to finance it, he'll need a big investor. Tesla returns to New York and knocks on the door of the man known as America's greatest banker, J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan invested in Tesla because he saw the opportunity to come up with a new form of wireless technology. Having secured funding, Tesla buys 200 acres near Shoreham, Long Island. In September 1901, his dream appears to be coming true as a massive tower goes up. Its name, Wardenclyffe. J.P. Morgan looked at Tesla as possibly providing a way to control worldwide communications. And so Wardenclyffe was the site of what was to be a worldwide transmitting device for broadcasting news, all the things that we associate with radio. That's what Tesla had promised J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan believes he's buying into a giant radio station. But unknown to his financial backer, Tesla has a more ambitious agenda. Tesla sort of is guilty of slightly misleading J.P. Morgan. Tesla's real goal was worldwide power transmission. And he just used the canard of, well, I'm going to work on communication as a way of, of securing funding. 
while Tesla races to crack the code of wireless transmission. He's about to be dramatically upstaged by Italian inventor Guglielmo Marconi, who in December 1901 sends the first radio transmission across the Atlantic. It's a blow Tesla will never recover from. And Marconi, too, will become a bitter enemy. Tesla contributed to the development of radio by coming up with practical circuits and with the idea of tuning. Despite his other interests, Tesla had 17 prior patents related to radio, and is enraged Marconi gets the credit for his invention. I wouldn't say that Marconi necessarily stole them as much as he took advantage of what was already out there in the literature. Worse still, Tesla's financial backer, J.P. Morgan, is furious. J.P. Morgan said, basically, I'm not going to keep funding this. Marconi's already beat you, and you haven't produced anything yet. After his financial relationship with J.P. Morgan Sowers, some believe Tesla used Wardenclyffe to undertake early tests for his death ray with devastating consequences. This was an event of such magnitude that something blasted an entire region. In 1908, in Tunguska, Siberia, a massive and mysterious explosion knocks down trees over 770 square miles. Some suggest a comet crash, but there's no crater. Others point the finger of blame at Nikola Tesla. According to theorists, the Tunguska event was the result of Tesla firing off a huge bolt of energy that was supposed to go to the North Pole, but which instead wound up in Siberia. It's a theory modern scientists are quick to dismiss. It's definitely not possible for Warren Cliff Tower to have created enough energy to cause the devastation of the magnitude that we saw in Tunguska. With the money gone, Tesla can't continue his research at Wardenclyffe. His dream of achieving wireless power is in tatters. In 1917, rumors emerge Wardenclyffe is being covertly used by German spies, and it's demolished. The once lauded scientist fades from the public eye. For decades, he lives as a recluse in hotel rooms raising pigeons. Tesla did kind of take a beating in his career. Um, he wasn't as prolific in his inventions. It seemed to adversely affect his emotional health. Despite all his visionary ideas, Tesla is broke and nearly forgotten. But as another world war appears on the horizon, Tesla makes a sensational announcement of a mega weapon that could revive his career. Tesla was a visionary. He was imagining a sufficiently superior technology that it was basically going to negate the existence of existing military technologies. Tesla believes his death ray invention will change the course of history, but it could come at a price, his own life. By the 1930s, a series of setbacks has turned visionary scientist Nikola Tesla into a virtual recluse. Disputes with Thomas Edison, J.P. Morgan, and Guglielmo Marconi have left him bitter and nearly destitute. But now, with war on the horizon, a public announcement throws him back in the spotlight. In newspapers across America, Tesla claims he has invented an energy weapon of awesome power. In 1934, Tesla claimed that his death beam would be able to destroy attacking enemy aircraft and wipe out an army of one million men. Tesla himself was intentionally ambiguous in describing his invention. He didn't want to describe it in too much detail for fear that someone else would then basically steal his invention. The details he does provide and the only drawing of it ever uncovered suggests that the weapon was a type of particle beam. So you can think of the, the basic particle beam weapon as essentially equivalent to a rifle, but instead of lead bullets, you have 
small ions, but you accelerate them to very high energies. Those particles could be traveling at about 36,000 miles per hour, many times faster than a speeding bullet, uh, generating enough heat to just go right through a plane and knock it out of the sky. The particle beams could be arranged to form a defensive shield. You'd have a whole series of towers, and the projecting beams would either kill the pilot or disable the engines. He's, that was his vision, again, to make war impractical to wage. While some scientists claim the invention is impossible, Tesla's adamant it will work and offers an early design for it to the highest bidder. Tesla certainly wasn't shy about it. He talked about it in interviews. He announced it in the papers as a way of generating publicity and interest because he wanted funding for his idea. Tesla's sale of preliminary death ray plans to the Soviets in 1935 is well documented. But it's believed these were early designs and did not include enough detail to make a working death ray. But new evidence shows, at the same time, Tesla had close contact with a Nazi agent. German-American writer George Virek would later be convicted of being on Hitler's payroll. George Sylvester Virek was a very devoted German first, and then later, as World War II began to develop, he was a devoted Nazi agent as well. We know that Tesla and Virek discussed Tesla's weapons systems and everything Tesla was working on. Virek was working for the Nazis all during that period. Did that information go to the Third Reich? With the possibility that the Soviets and the Nazis have prototype death ray plans, Tesla doesn't speak of it again until the middle of World War II, when he offers it to the US military. But within days of making contact, he's found dead in the Hotel New Yorker. Ever since, there have been rumors that his death was a result of foul play. To those who believe he was murdered, there are three main suspects. The Soviets, who might have killed Tesla to stop him selling the plans to a rival power, or to get their hands on more complete plans. The Nazis, who had been tipped off about the death ray through Tesla's friend, George Fierich, or the United States, which may have eliminated Tesla because he sold dangerous weapon plans to their enemies. Any papers that even had research related to the death ray at this point in history would be extremely valuable to any superpower around the world. According to some, valuable enough to kill for. Key to the Soviet theory is Tesla's own nephew, suspected communist Sava Kasanovich, who raids Tesla's hotel safe, providing another possible route for complete death ray plans to get to America's enemies. If the details for a particle beam weapon are, are taken control of and held by Kasanovich, then Kasanovich could turn around and give the papers to the Soviets. He could give the papers to the Nazis. He could give the papers to some other group in Europe that was gonna emerge as a major power at the end of World War II. But there's another theory about the safe-cracking raid that points back to America. It revolves around a mysterious hotel worker called Fitzgerald, who was also on the scene. The worker has the same name as one of Tesla's associates, Blois Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald was a scientist. He was a friend of Tesla's. He had a position in the military. He was only a private. There was also Fitzgerald present when the safe was opened, who was supposed to be hotel staff. It's quite possible that this Fitzgerald is the same as the other Fitzgerald. They're one and the same person. Could Fitzgerald have stolen Tesla's death ray plans for the American military? Later, he became involved in developing particle beam weapons research, as well as some of the other weapon systems that Tesla had devised. When the FBI and Office of Alien Property arrive to confiscate Tesla's documents, they may be too late. Hoover's instructions at the time of Tesla's death 
would have been to go and to get all of the research that he was currently engaged in to figure out what was actually in those documents. So what happened to the 200,000 Tesla documents U.S. agents seized? They send in John G. Trump, a physicist from MIT, and a team of people from Naval Intelligence. Professor John Trump spends two days examining 80 boxes of papers. But it seems the working plans for the death ray, if they ever existed, are gone. It seems that uh, Mr. Trump's investigation was very short. He said, uh, my conviction is that uh, there is nothing serious inside. Navy personnel secretly document Tesla's papers on microfilm. But mysteriously, it later goes missing. If you look at the records that were released under the Freedom of Information Act in the 1980s, the FBI says, yes, the, 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 the Navy had a, a set of secret papers that were microfilmed. And that microfilm has never, ever surfaced. And nobody knows whatever became of that microfilm. I believe the papers that are still missing may contain the key to how that death ray could have been built and employed. If Nikola Tesla was killed for his secret superweapon plans, finding the culprit could be as simple as finding out who has successfully created a death ray. And in 1945, the Allies find an alarming clue in Nazi Germany. Some of Germany's top scientists were working on a Sonnengewehr, or sun gun. The idea was to direct this like a giant magnifying glass at targets on Earth. Near the end of World War II, rumors leak to the Allies that Nazi Germany has weaponized a beam of deadly energy. Could this be the smoking gun that proves the Nazis stole Nikola Tesla's death ray plans and killed him for them? We found out uh, shortly after the American forces captured a base at Hillersleben in Germany. Some of Germany's top scientists were working on a Sonnengewehr, or sun gun. The Nazi secret plans for the sun gun plot out a mile-wide concave reflective surface mounted in space. Like a real-life Death Star, it would focus solar rays onto enemy cities and destroy them. The scientist uh, interviewed by the Americans said this was a project that had been authorized by Hitler. While it appears ambitious and destructive, the proposed Nazi weapon bears little resemblance to Tesla's death ray. What about the Soviets? They secretly bought Tesla's early concepts for the death ray in 1935 and may have wanted Tesla dead to prevent him from sharing the designs with their rivals, or so they could steal more complete plans. For decades, American intelligence suspects the Soviet Union are making a death ray. And at the height of the Cold War, they think they find proof. In the mid-1970s, the US government became concerned that the Soviets were developing a particle beam weapon at a remote location in Kazakhstan. Overhead surveillance satellites spotted a weird configuration of equipment in Kazakhstan. They were concerned that this bizarre-looking contraption was actually a version of Tesla's death ray machine. Around the same time, in 1976, a confidential U.S. intelligence report records a blinding beam of light seen by pilots of British European Flight 831 while it passed over Western Soviet Union. A beam Soviet authorities refused to explain. Two years later, there's a strange and terrifying incident over North America. A sudden eruption of freak lightning bolts over a hundred times stronger than conventional lightning. They're dubbed Superbolts. In the 1970s, there was a Superbolt that took place over Bell Island in Newfoundland, Canada. It was so devastating that people thought it had to be a super weapon of some kind. They put things together and very high up individuals in the government believed that the superbolts over Bell Island in Newfoundland 
as well as that facility in Kazakhstan was all evidence of the fact that the Soviets were going full tilt on developing Tesla's particle beam weapon. But it turns out the strange facility in Kazakhstan is actually a test site for a nuclear thermal spacecraft, not a particle beam weapon. That doesn't mean the Soviets never tried to build the death ray. It just means that no one has been able to prove it. Since Tesla's death, there has been a lot of speculation that Tesla's discoveries are being used or concealed by governments around the world today. Those governments include the United States. Documents prove the U.S. military has been involved in secret particle beam research for decades. Research that could have been triggered by paper stolen from Tesla's hotel room in 1943. The Americans worked on particle beam weapons in order to shoot down nuclear missiles beginning in the 1970s into the 1980s. And it ultimately became the genesis of the idea for what Ronald Reagan called the Strategic Defense Initiative or Star Wars. Today, there's a great deal of work on directed energy weapons, and it involves billions and billions of dollars. It involves lasers, particle beam weapons, a variety of different types of directed en energy technology. America, Nazi Germany, the Soviet Union, all had a motive to obtain plans for the death ray and even perhaps to kill Nikola Tesla for them. Questions still remain over the actions of his own nephew. But proof of foul play in Tesla's death remains elusive. And the great irony is, as world powers fought over his superweapon, all the great inventor wanted was to create peace. What Tesla was trying to do was make war obsolete. He was a mad scientist, but at the same time someone who was very concerned about the future of the human race and wanted his inventions used only to promote peace around the world. <laughs> 